All right, Sonic fans, you have Sonic Mania in your hot little hands, but you've got more Sonic to come this year. This is Aaron Weber, who works with Sonic Team. He's going to tell us about Sonic Forces. Two Sonic games in one year, you guys must be going crazy. That's right, we're pretty excited. Yeah. Uh, so Sonic Mania has just come out. It's one of the highest rated Sonic games in 15 years. I love it. It's good to hear, thank yeah. you. Uh, and next we have Sonic Forces, and this is the next game from Sonic Team. So Sonic Mania built by indie developers in collaboration with Sonic Team, but in the meantime, Sonic Team was cooking up their own game, and that's Sonic Forces. It is a mix of 3D and 2D, and what everyone loved about the 3D Sonic games, generations and colors, and a lot of new stuff like making your very own character for the first time ever in the Sonic franchise. That sounds cool. Now, the, we know that there is some history with the 3D Sonics. Some, there's this kind of, uh, if you looked at it on a chart with the ratings, some are good, some are bad, but I think in the last little while, with colors and with generations, they were starting to find a groove, right? But what's unique about this one? What makes this distinct and different from those experiences? Half of it is is what does kind of get inspired by generations and colors. I'm glad you mentioned those because those are the ones when you look back, those yeah. are the ones that everyone goes, those were really good. Those were like the 3D Sonic games we wanted. And those are kind of what has inspired much of Forces. Yeah. But Sonic Team didn't want to just make another generations or another colors. They wanted to kind of do something new. So they've taken the best out of those and then they've said, all right, now you can make your own character. All right, now we're going to bring back the Wisps from Sonic Colors, but make them both, you know, offensive and also for platforming, which is really cool now. Now, when you say customize a character, we're not just talking like you put a different color on the Sonic model. You can actually build your own character in this game. That's right. There's yeah. there's a number of different animals to choose from. You could be a wolf, you could be a dog, you could be a bear, a hedgehog. It's it's kind of whatever you want to do. And some people are going to look at that and go, "Ooh, I want to get really serious with my character and really get into it. And, and that's totally cool. And yeah. some people are going to go, I want to be more silly and just make it kind of crazy and have fun with it. And so we've built it so that no matter what you want to do, whether serious or silly, you can get into it and have a good time. It's a beautiful looking game and it's got a brand new engine, I think, right? That you guys are talking about? That's right. It's called yeah. the Hedgehog Engine 2, okay. made by Sonic Team. Uh, and not only that, but they've got really all the all-stars that are there. Um, Tomoya Otani did the soundtrack, he did the Sonic Color soundtrack, worked with Jun Sanoe on the guitar stuff, who did, you know, the Adventure and Adventure 2 soundtrack stuff. Nice. Um, and, and a lot of people involved, Shun Nakamura, who is the game director, uh, all of these guys, the producer, all of these guys working very hard and they know Sonic very well. So we're pretty stoked. Awesome. Now, one of the challenges with 3D, obviously, is camera control yeah. and sort of keeping up with Sonic as he's whipping around through these 3D cameras. What is Sonic Forces doing to help us uh, not lose our minds playing the game? <laughs> <laughs> now, this, yeah, it's a great question. And uh, one of the things that's really different about Mania and Forces, in Mania, it is old school difficulty, right? You've yeah. got a set amount of lives. When you lose your lives, that's it. And you go back to the beginning of the level. Mania's got a save feature, but those of us that played the original Genesis games, if you if you lost your lives, you started from level one, yeah. you know? So Mania's a little bit nicer. Forces is even more forgiving than that. Um, so in Forces, if you hit a moment where you're like, oh, I can't, I can't beat this, or I keep dying, there's not a life counter. You're not gonna run out of lives and hit a game over. You can actually keep progressing until you finally clear that moment, and you don't ever have to worry about dying so much that you have to restart the whole level. Okay, very cool. And I, I, is most of the game going to be sort of from a side perspective? Are you transporting yourself through the game mostly through that? Or are we going to have a lot of adventure style exploration areas too? Uh, I wouldn't call them exploration areas. It's, it's not like a hub world or anything like that. Okay. Uh, but the, the game will have a world map. And from that, you can kind of go around and pick the different levels. Each of the levels is going to play differently. So Modern Sonic plays a lot like Unleashed or Generations or Colors. Um, a lot of the classic Sonic stuff is more the 2D side-scrolling, right? Like Generations. Yes, but and with 3D art. That's right, yeah. but with, with much touched up art and graphics. And then you've got the hero character, which is a mix of the two as well. A lot like Colors, where sometimes you're in 3D with the camera behind Sonic, and sometimes yeah. you're from the side watching and platforming. So when we're camera behind the character, is it almost like you're watching a bit of a, a, a movie of the sequence of Sonic whipping or what your character whipping through the world? Sort of, you've got control. Yeah. Uh, so just like Generations, whenever you would you know, push the button to boost and the camera's behind Sonic, you just kind of watch. It's over the shoulder, it just goes crazy. Yeah. Uh, and the boost, of course, I should note, that is there for people that kind of know what they want to do or want to go really fast. Yeah. If you want to take your time and platform, you should. You know, Feel free and boost once you've played the level a few times. Yes. Are we going to see any sequences where the animal characters, the Sonics and the whatever creation we make are talking with humans? Is that going to happen? Uh, yeah, there's a love scene uh, at the end of the game. No, I'm kidding. This is not true. None of this is true. This is not. This is not Sonic 06. Okay. Um, 
what is pretty cool is that the cutscenes in the game will show your custom character. I won't spoil things, but I will say that we have made some really amazing test characters internally at Sega <laughs> and had some great cutscene moments when the character kind of like walks in and has this crazy stuff, you know, decked out on them. Uh, but I won't, I won't spoil what the accessories are, but it's pretty funny. So you made a YouTube friendly game is what you're telling us. <laughs> of course, of course, as we always do. You know, the Sonic 3D games have it, it sort of existed in this weird kind of paradox because I know they've sold very well and you've got a lot of fans out there that really sort of found Sonic in with this kind of 3D kind of design. And I guess you have to kind of keep them happy, but you also have to keep the 16-bit sort of Sonic players happy. It's a tricky kind of balancing act, isn't it? I think it's a challenge for any franchise that survives for over 25 right. years. Right, because you have people that are, are growing up now, people probably my age, right, that grew up with Sonic and now are old enough to have kids of their own and to introduce their kids to Sonic. Yeah. And a lot of people that got introduced, as you said, probably with like Adventure 2 Battle or games like that. So shout out to you guys. Yeah. Um, and it's challenging sometimes because you're like, how do, we, how do we appease all of these people? But the answer is really simple, if you ask me. And I think Mania touched upon this answer, which is that when you make a great game, it doesn't matter whether it's 3D or 2D, right. people will come. And do you think that there's a bit of a, a disadvantage, or is it all sort of positive that you have two Sonic games coming in at the same same year? Is one going to feed into the other, or are people going to gravitate to one? Because, I mean, how, how is Sega kind of managing that? It's a great question. Uh, on the community side, which is what I get to see day in and day out, yeah. um, I've seen a very distinct people that are very you know excited for one or the other. Yeah. But we see a lot of people, and this may surprise some, we see a lot that overlaps. Yeah. People that go, oh, I really love 3D games, but man, I heard Mania was great. Let me, I'm going to go try Mania. And then likewise, people that might go, you know, Mania was so good, I'm ready to kind of see what's next from Sonic Team. Right. Uh, it's important, I think, for, for the franchise when you have sort of games like Mania that come out that are so good. Uh, it does a lot for the brand. It does a lot to, to help rejuvenate things. I'm curious, are any of the Sonic Mania team involved in any of the stuff here with Sonic Forces, or were they completely separated? Well, the, the Mania indie devs are yeah. separated. Yeah. Uh, but people like Izuka-san, who is the head of Sonic Team, and Hoshino-san, who is the creative director, yeah. those guys were heavily involved in both games. Okay. And so they, I get to work with them every day, and they're awesome, fantastic people. And <laughs> watching them like put this all together, and, and they work really closely with Sonic Team in Japan. Yeah. The game is developed in Japan. We've got Izuka-san, Hoshino-san here in the States working closely with us as it all comes together. That's awesome. Well, it's pretty impressive to see Sega has developed a Sonic the Hedgehog time machine where you can play 16-bit and modern-day video games in the same year. Impressive. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you.